In our last episode, we finally found out what was in Victoria's trunk and discovered that Acadia was responsible for yet another atrocity. It's time to finally confront Dima about his memories, and we'll start by talking with him about his kill switch. Dima? I hope you don't mind, but I had Chase shadow you. She saw you entering and leaving the nucleus. So, what was in my memory banks? Are we closer to resolving the conflict on this island peacefully? One of your memories was about a kill switch you installed to shut down power to Far Harbor and let the fog take them. It's all here on this holotape. Let me see this. I remember. I was afraid that Far Harbor might turn against us. See us as too different for their precious island. So I made a contingency plan. Mass murder. I hid the kill switch code because I couldn't stomach the thought of actually using it. Then I hid the memory. Because I couldn't even stand knowing I made it. What have I done? If the children of Adam were to ever get a hold of that code, they would destroy Far Harbor. Why save them? Don't the children have reasons for hating Far Harbor? When the fog got worse, the people of Far Harbor killed a child of Adam missionary. There's been nothing but hatred and bloodshed since. But murder is not the solution. We should destroy them both. Far Harbor and the children of Adam don't deserve to live. You're advocating nothing but senseless destruction. Maybe Acadia could survive siding with one group, but killing off both? It would never work. Here we have two options. To advocate for Far Harbor's destruction, or to promise Dima that we won't use the kill switch code. If we choose the latter... Relax. Don't worry, Dima. I already have the code. Far Harbor is safe. Good. Now we just need to find some way to end this conflict. Have you found anything else in my memories? The conversation switches, but if we choose the former... We should use the code, Dima. Far Harbor should die. What? How can you say that? <sighs> I misspoke. Sorry. I see. That still leaves us with what to do about the code. Instead of saying that we misspoke, our only remaining options are to pass one of two charisma checks to convince Dima that Far Harbor needs to be destroyed. If we fail those charisma checks, Dima has the same reaction. Because you were right, Dima. It's only a matter of time before Far Harbor turns on you. Because you need to make a decision, Dima. Whose side are you on? I side with Adam. No. I won't shed blood for this. Far Harbor and the children can both live if we find a way. However, if we pass either of the Charisma checks, Dima has a different response, but the same response for both Charisma checks. You're, you're right. I can't stay neutral in this any longer. Acadia has to take a side, use the code. But remember, there will be no going back. The fog will roll into Far Harbor, and the creatures of the island will kill everyone. By passing the charisma checks, we now have permission from Dima to destroy Far Harbor. Obtaining or failing to obtain this permission has implications with Dima later on. Now to use the kill switch. But before we do, we can travel to Far Harbor to see if the locals have anything to say about it. And indeed, one does. Captain Avery has something to say about the kill switch, but only after we have a conversation with her about her really being a synth a conversation we'll tackle in an upcoming episode. Excuse me. I hope the harbor's been good to you. The turbine powering the condensers. I found a code that will shut it down permanently. You found what? Huh. So old Dima has a contingency plan for us. Please, tell me you have no intention of using it. Without power, nothing will hold back the fog. You suspected Dima? Considering what Dima did to me, the old me, I put nothing past him. As twisted as he is, I'm more concerned with you. Do I need to be worried about your newfound knowledge? I haven't made up my mind. I know my people can be infuriating, 
But surely they don't all deserve to die. Please, leave the wind farm alone. Here, I hope this will help you make up your mind. Not sure. What are you gonna give me? You'd really... Look, I don't think we can spare more than 500, all right? So you're not gonna do anything rash, right? Our town really means that little to you? Fine. I can do... a thousand. It's yours, if you promise not to harm the condensers. Don't worry. I'm not gonna deactivate the condensers. Thank God. I've just got one other thing to ask. Keep this quiet, all right? I'll trust you. But the others... I can't guarantee they'll be as understanding. By talking with Avery about the kill switch after having previously told her about her true identity, we get between 500 and 1,000 caps. But at this point, even after promising not to destroy Far Harbor, we can always break our promise. Despite urging us not to tell anyone else about this in Far Harbor, we don't find any dialogue options with any of the other characters to talk about the kill switch. Next, we can travel to the Nucleus to see what High Confessor Tectus has to say about the kill switch. Excuse me, High Confessor? Adam's favored child graces my presence. Is there something I can do for you? The wind turbine powering Far Harbor's condensers, Dima built a kill switch into it. And I recovered the code to take it offline for good. Dima, I knew that machine was the key. Though I suppose this only further proves the sanctity of our goal. Even Far Harbor's so-called savior knew those beasts couldn't be trusted. So at long last, Adam has granted us, you, the chance to return what is rightfully ours. To restore the missing piece of Adam's kingdom once and for all. So tell me, are you prepared to do what must be done. I'm not sure. What's gonna happen to Far Harbor with the condensers gone? What should have happened long ago? Adam's holy fog will overrun the town. The island's beasts will no doubt follow suit. Far Harbor will be no more. Are you ready to make it so? Not for free, I won't. You bring down those profane condensers and I guarantee you a reward. But only once I hear tell of the fog rolling through Far Harbor's streets. I'm still deciding. What decision is there to make? Far Harbor has harmed your family, denied our brilliant lord. Yet Adam has given you the tool to set things right. But I can understand you may need time to ready yourself. Though I would not keep Adam waiting. I am. Then I will not delay you any further. Go. Do what Adam put you on this earth to do. He likewise promises us a reward, but we don't get it until after the deed is done. If we really want to do this, we need to travel to Wind Farm Maintenance. Wind Farm Maintenance is a small bunker due east of Acadia, though there are two roads that travel north to southeast of Wind Farm Maintenance, neither of them lead here. The fastest way to get there is to head east from Acadia and use our jetpack to sail down the mountain. We strike ground outside the door to Wind Farm Maintenance. Inside, we find a destroyed Assaultron, and looking around, we find the dismembered corpses of Children of Adam. So Tectus and the children have already tried to disable the fog condensers, but this facility's pre-war defenses stopped them in their tracks. Moving down the stairs, we pass by the corpse of another child of Adam. At the bottom of the stairs, we pass by yet another corpse. How long have they been trying to destroy Far Harbor? Directly ahead of us, we see a security gate, locked with a big red button. But the button isn't functioning. We have to restore power to it. We see a red cable coming from it, and following it to a room directly behind us, we find a fuse box. But this fuse box requires industrial grade fuses, and there are four missing. We find one on a side table here. We can pop that back in place, but now we need to go find the others. 
Moving east, we find a couple of shelves. There's a toolbox here with caps and bobby pins inside, a first aid box on the wall directly behind us, but the rest of these shelves are all barren. Heading back to the hallway, we find more supply shelves to the west. At the bottom of one, we find a tool case, and on top of each of these shelves, we find one industrial grade fuse. That makes four, so heading back to the fuse box, we can pop them back in. We hear the power snap on, and moving to the security door, we can push the big red button. Intruder detected. Initiated countermeasures. Goodbye. So the children of Adam died to these pre-war ceiling-mounted machine gun turrets, and at least one Assaultron, but they destroyed it. We see three paths forward, each marked by a number, but before we can move forward, something sneaks out of door number one. I think we're alone. Oh great, another Assaultron. How many more are waiting for us? Well, we arrive at terminal number two, but I suppose we should do this in order. Moving north, we can pass through a doorway that leads towards terminal number one. Along the way, we pass a wooden crate with bottle caps and rat away inside, and a cooler with some mute fruit. Then, passing through door marked number one, destroy more pre-war security. We see a terminal regulating a giant wind turbine. We can see it spinning directly behind this console. Activating the terminal, turbine one status active. Grid connection, MDI 6 X auxiliary. Main department of infrastructure, I'm assuming. Please select a command. We can view windmill status, turbine data, Power level 84%, circuit integrity 81%, current rotational threshold 15 RPM, revolutions per minute. System data, most recent user login deleted. So either this was deleted before the war or someone has been here after. Could this someone be Dima? Backing out, we can access system files, but we find that access is denied. Remote system lockdown active. Authorized user credentials required. So we can't get anywhere with terminal number one. But next to this, we find a facility terminal on a desk. Verdant Air Wind Power, a division of GDA Fusion. Active user, K. Reidecker. So it looks like Mass Fusion was just a regional power company in the Commonwealth. GDA Fusion powered things here in Maine. I wonder what GDA stands for. Here we find three messages. In the first, August 14th, 2077, remember why you're there. To K. Reidecker, from VP of Marketing and PR, Julius Brown, August 14th, 2077. While your efforts to further the viability of this wind power experiment are admirable, Dr. Reidecker, we don't want you losing focus on why exactly GDA is funding this project. You're up there to make us look good to all the U.S. Senators and Representatives vacationing in the great state of Maine, and not like a company baselessly accused of poisoning their constituents' groundwater. We're in the fusion business, Kelly, so just file your reports, collect your paycheck, and enjoy the fact you're living on a resort island on our dime. Oh, so GDA Fusion put up this wind farm not to actually provide power to the island, but so that they could tell senators and representatives that they're not in the business of poisoning groundwater with toxic waste. No, they also have some clean energy. They employed this Dr. Reidecker, who appears to have been taking his job more seriously than they wanted him to. He was actually trying to make this wind farm work. In the next one, September 22nd, 2077, no need for hostility. To K. Reidecker from VP of Marketing and PR, Julius Brown, September 22nd, 2077. There's no need to get hostile, Doc. We're partners in this, remember? I ran your report up the chain like you asked, and it generated as much interest as I told you it would. Perpetually sustainable power isn't a phrase that gets people excited around here. So unless you can figure out how your self-proclaimed breakthrough can be made to sell more household fusion generators, I just lay off. I'm trying to help you, Kelly. So Dr. Reidecker wouldn't back down. He made a breakthrough. He was able to take this wind farm and turn it into a perpetual source of sustainable power. Not something the manufacturers of household fusion generators wants to hear. 
They wanted to sell generators to each and every American home. And Dr. Reidecker's research here was putting their business at risk. And in the final one, October 17th, 2077. Got what you wanted. To Kay Reidecker from VP of Marketing and PR, Julius Brown, October 17th, 2077. You wanted attention from corporate? Well, you're getting it. Your team has two weeks to wrap up whatever they're doing before we begin dismantling the plant. The board members read the report you sent them behind my back and decided it was against GDA's best interest to spend money on a possible rival technology. This could have been so easy, Doc, but you had to mess it up. There's one last thing I need to say, though. Please take the time to remind your team of the non-disclosure agreements they all signed. Those are perpetually binding. Dr. Reidecker had two weeks to abandon the plant, but even that wasn't enough time because just a few days later, the bombs dropped, which is why the wind farm is still active today. Exploring behind the turbine, we find a toolbox and a leaning against a wall, a skeleton. Could this be the remains of Dr. Reidecker? Did he stay here to the bitter end? I suppose we'll never know, but we came here to commit a mass murder and we can't do so from number one. So heading back through the door, we can move towards turbine regulator terminal number two. Turbine two status active grid connection, MDI 0711 Acadia. Okay, great, could this be the one? Viewing the windmill status, power level 91%, circuit integrity 82%, current rotational threshold 19 revolutions per minute, system data most recent user login, again, deleted. Backing out and accessing system files, we again find that we don't have the credentials, so terminal number two is a no-go. Looks like we've got to hit terminal number three. This bit of lore helps explain why the wind farm has been able to provide power 200 years after the apocalypse. Dr. Reidecker made a breakthrough. He discovered new technology that allowed the wind farm to provide perpetual power. It's probably the only place like it in the world. Moving towards door number three, we can open it, and as we head down the hallway, we hear the familiar sound of an Assaultron. <sighs> well, at least neither of these exploded. We find the ruins of a storeroom to the right, but all we find here is a baseball and a tin of cram. So continuing down the hallway, we can move into room number three. Oh, but there's only one of them. At last, we see some evidence of the toll 200 years would have had on a pre-war installation like this. Roots from trees and plants from the island have burrowed their way into this room. They damaged and destroyed the second ceiling-mounted turret, but thankfully, they appear to have left turbine number three intact. We see it spinning behind the terminal bank. Accessing the terminal, turbine three status active grid connection MDI 0161 Far Harbor. Wait a minute, what? Shouldn't this read Bar Harbor? If this is a pre-war terminal, though I suppose if Dima had access to it, he could have changed it from Bar Harbor to Far Harbor. Under windmill status, power level 88%, circuit integrity 79%, current rotational threshold 18 revolutions per minute, most recent user login deleted. Accessing system files, we again see that we don't have the credentials, but at the very bottom of this list, we find a new entry. We can run Tempest, a storm. Initiating. System override initiated. Override K, um, system, bracket, bracket, bracket. Contact admin. Astaj, look, hack, look, 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 who ya deserve at nine? Oh, who forty nine? Adzu jui jibik kunut zip bracket 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 turbine status corrupted. Contact administrator backing out. The turbine comes to a standstill. We have cut off power to the fog condensers around Far Harbor. We fail the quest the way life should be, and we start the quest close to home. At the very back of this room, we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk with caps and ammunition inside. Retracing our steps, we can leave wind farm maintenance, but arriving outside, we hear the bellowing of creatures from the island. We can now 
witness the destruction of Far Harbor. Wind farm maintenance is overlooking two roads that lead straight to Far Harbor. So all we have to do is hop down the side of this mountain here and follow them north. Along the way, we pass one of the fog condensers we repaired when we first arrived at Far Harbor. It's still working. So we selectively disabled only the ones that were protecting Far Harbor, which means the rest of the island, including our settlements, should still be okay. As we travel through the greater Bar Harbor ruins, we hear the sounds of creatures and gunfire in the distance. Arriving at Far Harbor, we find it on fire, and the fog condensers are turned off. We see creatures inside. Wait a minute. Hey! God, they came out to attack us. Moving in town, oh my god. We see puddles of flame all over the place. Moving left, we can go into the Mariner's house. And we find her lying dead on the floor. Heading out. Uh-oh. One more. That's when I thought we were getting along. On the dock, we find the corpse of a harbor woman, and next to her, the body of Captain Avery. And sure enough, on her corpse, we find a synth component. There are more harbor men and women lying all over the place. In Avery's office, we find another dead harbor woman. And moving into Alan Lee's weapon shop, we find him lying dead on the ground. We see that Brooks and Teddy had tried to fortify their shops by rolling down large screens to cover the windows. But this wasn't enough to keep out the creatures from the island. They knocked a hole in the side of the building and stormed the place. We find a flayed corpse draped over Brooks's counter and another one on a table nearby. Near to his chemistry station on the ground is Teddy Wright with another eviscerated corpse hunched over his desk. Moving behind Brooks's counter, we find his body lying on the ground. And as we were told on his corpse, we find his synth component. Heading out of their shop, we can move northeast. We see that the battle has opened up this previously boarded up tourist kiosk. We don't have access to this room unless we choose to destroy Far Harbor. Inside, we find an unlocked box safe on the ground filled with a bunch of ammunition. We have to steal it, but by now we are just stealing from bodies. Just outside, we find the corpse of Debbie. More harbor men and women, and then the corpse of Mitch. Mitch and Debbie raced out of the last plank and were cut down while defending Far Harbor. There's another bloody corpse on a lawn chair by the Meyerlurk stew pot. We'll go into the last plank in a minute, but first we can check on Cassie Dalton. Oh no, we see her little table is completely missing. It's fallen into the waters, but where is her corpse? Hopping out of our power armor, we can leap down to the floating boardwalk below and then scour the waters beneath the pier to try and find Cassie Dalton. And sure enough, we find her floating against the pier. I scoured the waters beneath the harbor, but I didn't find any other corpses. Back onto the dock, we can move around to the dregs. And then I remembered Bertha and Tony. Did we kill the kids? Heading into small Bertha's house, no, we don't see their bodies, but we find Bertha's knife. She wouldn't have just left this. Perhaps we don't find the bodies of Bertha and Tony, because Bethesda may have been squeamish with the idea of adding child corpses to the game. When done exploring the docks, we can head into the last plank. Yeah! A legendary angler! Oh no, look at this place! There's a body propped on top of a tipped over and burning table. And here we again see that horrible Bethesda skeleton glitch at work. Oh, I hate it so much. There's another corpse by the door and another draped over a bar stool. Heading behind the counter, we see that one of the rooms above has caved in and the rubble beneath is on fire. If we haven't already, we can take the opportunity to loot the Vim Quartz that Mitch kept behind the counter. Not like anyone's gonna miss it now. Oh, but wait a minute. Tink, the cat. Did we kill the cat? 
Racing up the stairs, we find more rubble from the roof on fire. Heading into the room that we can rent from Mitch, we see that it's more or less untouched. I guess that means we can still sleep here. Heading back out to the hallway, we find a bloody corpse next to a pipe weapon. More beds and rubble on fire. Another corpse in the corner. But the final room is empty. We don't find corpses and we don't find Tink. I suppose this is good news. Perhaps that means that Tink found a way to escape. Leaping over the banister, we see that the bar patrons tried to have a final stand up here. They blocked up the staircase with furniture, but it didn't do them any good. So far, Harbor is destroyed, and the people are all dead. Now to find out how everyone will react to this, we can start by checking in with old Longfellow. Heading to his island, we can pass under his glowing archway, but as we approach his cabin... With a bottle. <laughs> Bury me with a bottle, he says. He opened fire on us. How did he know what we had done? How did he know that it was us? If we haven't already, we can use the opportunity to loot his unique hunter's long coat. Then, if we left Uncle Ken at the National Park Visitor Center, we can head that way to check in with him. But... bothering anybody now. He also opens fire on us for killing his nephew. This can present a problem for those who are into settlement building as Uncle Ken counts as one of our settlers. And every time we kill a settler in one of our settlements, our settlement suffers a huge happiness penalty. Just one more thing we have to bear in mind before making this decision. Now that the deed is done, we can head back to the nucleus and report our success to High Confessor Tectus. Excuse me, High Confessor? The moment it happened, I could hear it. A change in the wind. It's over, isn't it? Far Harbor has finally returned to Atom's Grand Kingdom. Grand feels like a bit of a stretch, but yeah. Far Harbor's been dealt with. At last. Yeah, it's done. Can I get paid now? Of course. But I must say... Yeah, you got what you wanted. Those people are all doomed. Do not fret, child. This is a happy occasion. It's done. Far Harbor sleeps under the fog at last. Glory to Atom! Glory indeed. There's a lot of blood on our hands. I hope you can live with that. I did not doubt he sent you to us. But now I finally see why. Thanks to you, the greatest threat to our family is no more. And for that, you will be rewarded. Here, a paltry thing, considering what you've accomplished. He gives us Adam's Bulwark, a legendary marine armor chest piece. Damage resistance and energy resistance increase with rads. Specifically, our damage resistance and energy resistance increases by 5 for every 10% of our total health that is taken over by radiation. That means the total maximum benefit we can get from this piece of armor, if 90% of our health is eaten up by rads, is plus 45 to damage resistance and energy resistance. Incidentally, this doesn't always drop as a chest piece. If our character is below level 40, it more often spawns as either a left or right arm. We are more likely to get the chest piece if we complete the quest after level 40. It drops with the Zealot armor mod attached, but we can upgrade it at any armor workbench to either the Inquisitor or the Assault mod. Your dedication to the purity of Atom's Kingdom cannot be overstated. Such dedication should be acknowledged. From now on, you shall be known by all as Inquisitor, a title befitting your accomplishments. We've also reached out to the settlements you've been helping in the fog. Missionaries have been dispatched to inform them of the turn of events. We should have no trouble swaying them to our cause now. You have ended an era of wickedness, Inquisitor. Go forth in the age of Atom. 
With that, we get the Inquisitor of Adam perk, which grants a bonus to weapon damage. The higher our rads, the greater the bonus. For every 100 rads we have, our weapon damage is increased by 10%. It works like the Bloody Mess perk, in that the perk only affects ballistic damage, pure radiation damage, and energy damage. It doesn't affect other types of damage we can do, like explosive damage. Incidentally, we only get Inquisitor of Adam if we chose to complete either the Witch Hunt quest or the Heretic quest aggressively, by killing either Sister Aubert or Gwyneth. If we chose to resolve those two quests peacefully, we get the perk Crusader of Adam, but it has the exact same effects. Now, Tectus had an odd statement here about sending Child of Adam missionaries to our settlements in the fog. This sort of gave me the impression that we would be able to recruit Children of Adam as settlers for our settlements. However, after siding with the Children of Adam, I went to each and every one of my settlements, and the Children of Adam never arrived. I even went to a settlement that was empty, with no other settlers there, and it had plenty of food, water, and beds, and I waited several in-game weeks, and the Children of Adam never arrived. Granted, I didn't try to make all of these settlements have 80 to 100 happiness, but my hunch is that this may have been cut from the game, they simply left that line in Tectus' dialogue talking about the missionaries. After all, it wouldn't make much sense for missionaries to start living at Far Harbor settlements that have fog condensers. All of our other settlements, Dalton Farm, the Echo Lake Lumber Mill, Longfellow's Cabin, and the National Park Visitor Center are all protected by the fog by the fog condensers, even after we destroy Far Harbor. So it wouldn't make much sense for the children to visit there. At any rate, if for some reason I just missed it, and you had Children of Adam show up at your settlements without using mods, let me know in the comments. But what am I thinking? Our brethren must hear the news. With that, High Confessor Tectus races out of the vessel, and we meet him outside. Brothers! Sisters! Come forth! Come forth and know the fate of Far Harbor! Gone! Gone is that bastion of heresy. Gone is that seething cauldron of desecration, washed clean at last. Today, brothers and sisters, Far Harbor's streets run thick with fog, thanks to our champion, a soul of valor, of devotion, of purpose. Our Inquisitor, remember this moment, brothers and sisters. For thanks to them, a new age begins. Ours. Glory to Atom. Glory to Atom. From here on out, the people of the Nucleus will either refer to us as Inquisitor or Crusader. The missing piece of our kingdom restored at last. Thanks to our Inquisitor. Island finally belongs to Adam. As it should be. They're saying... Far Harbor, is it really gone? <sighs> Our home is whole again. Thank you, Inquisitor. They're finally gone. The cost of refusing Adam's grace, I suppose. I guess Far Harbor finally got what they deserved. Adam's judgment finally brought to Far Harbor. Far Harbor. Claimed by fog. Adam's will be done. After what you've done? None will dare stand against Adam. Huh. No more Far Harbor. It's tough to get your head around. Uh, was there something you needed? Far Harbor finally sleeps beneath the fog. Impressive work. Then we can head to Acadia to see how Dima feels about this. If we destroyed Far Harbor without passing Dima's speech checks and thereby not getting his permission... Hey, Dima. The fog has swept over Far Harbor. Everyone in the town is dead, torn apart and eaten by the creatures of the island. What have you done? I had nothing to do with it. Don't lie to me. Tell me why you murdered all those people. I made a choice, Dima. It's more than you've done. Don't you dare turn this around on me. I am not the one who's committed mass murder. I'm sorry, Dima, but Far Harbor and the children would never have been able to coexist. I'm just supposed to accept that? This mass murder you've committed? 
I have done Adam's bidding. Cleanse this land of the unfaithful. So, child of Adam, a new grisly chapter has opened in your faith's history. The day the holy have committed mass murder. I am done talking to you. I have to prepare Acadia for living in this new, terrible world you've handed us. I hope, for your sake, that you can live with all that blood on your hands. And with that, he refuses to talk with us ever again. We have nothing more to discuss. Leave. We are done here. Leave us in peace. What little we can salvage. If, however, we passed either of Dima's speech checks, and we destroyed Far Harbor with his permission... So, as we planned, the fog has swept over Far Harbor. Everyone in the town is dead, torn apart and eaten by the creatures of the island, just as the children of Adam wanted. We've helped them purify this land of the unclean. Any regrets, Dima? Don't worry. I still think you were right. Acadia had to pick a side. Far Harbor was an ignorant stain on this island. I suppose we get the privilege of deciding that. There's that old saying about winners and history. Don't second guess yourself, Dima. We did the right thing. You're right. We can only move forward now. Now, Acadia is on the side of Atom. The right side. I suppose you're right. Our two people will have to work together as long as we're on this island. Thank you. You've made some hard choices, but in the end, I think the island is better for them. Now, if you don't mind, I'm a bit tired, and there's the rest of Acadia's future I need to plan for. He gets tired, he wants a break, but he will consent to talk with us in the future. Far Harbor is gone. But this island will still have a future. With that, we've resolved things here on the island, and we can now talk with Kasumi to try to convince her to go back home. But that is only one of the many ways we can end things here on the island. In our next video, we'll explore what happens if instead of destroying Far Harbor, we choose to destroy the Nucleus. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on this channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Glory to Atom. If you, like High Confessor Tectus, believe that the heresy of Far Harbor needs to be punished, then you can find this design on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my patrons on Patreon and my YouTube members, you have my sincerest thanks. You make these videos possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.